Guys, hello. This is a video about the latest uh, goings on at Grimsby Town and uh, a little bit of a review of the game yesterday. Uh, but the main news that came out of it yesterday is after uh, two and three quarter years, uh, close to three years, uh, Paul Hurst has been relieved of his duties. Uh, now, I, I, I didn't put a video out uh, last night, which I said I wasn't going to. Uh, but I thought I'd let dust settle a bit and uh, everyone sort of have their say on um, on what they think and how they feel about it and things like that. Uh, this is my view on it all. First of all, we'll talk about the game a little bit. Um, it it was again a, a nothing game, as in it was so close between any any teams. Um, and I was with a friend of mine, and we did have a uh, uh, we were sat just off to the side where the disabled uh, fans were placed. Just um, and it, it was. Um, Great view, by the way, Doncaster, I will say that. But um, it was a nothing game again. It was a 50-50 game again. Uh, and we didn't really create a lot. Uh, we didn't really do an awful lot, to be honest. Um, and neither did they. Neither did they. Um, apart from a few shots. Uh, credit goes out to Harvey Cartwright. Uh, he, did, uh, he had probably his best game ever in a town shirt um, I say ever because we had him as a very young lad in the youth teams um, uh, and pulled off a couple of cracking saves uh, we probably should have gone in front um, through Gavin Hollahan but uh, Gavin it just didn't just didn't happen and then he gave away the penalty which it was and uh they slotted it away and 1-0 um, uh, was the final scoreline. Uh, but I remember saying during the last 20 minutes, Hursty changed something. Changed something. He made one sub, um, which made me believe he's given up on this. Um, I uh, we just whimpered out to uh, to a, another narrow, yeah, another defeat, four straight. Uh, now in fourth bottom in twenty first. Uh, that was the game. That was the easy easy part to talk about. Now let's go to the main meat and gravy of this video. Um, Ten minutes after um, the final whistle, uh, apparently J Jason Stockwood and uh, Andrew Pettit and uh, Debbie Cook were seen going down the um, down the tunnel, and within ten minutes of um, full time, uh, while me and my friend were on our way back home, um, it was announced that Paul Hurst had been uh, sacked as manager of Grimsby Town after nearly three years in charge. And I have to say it is the absolute right decision. Uh, and I don't say that easily because I am uh, a big believer in Paul Hurst, always had been. Um, but I remember saying when I got in the car, I'm done. Uh, and I kind of knew he was done. And I think uh, it it couldn't carry on the way it was doing. Uh, looking on the field, Danny Rose looked frustrated, agitated, and I think the whole uh, players were. Um, we have got a, a, a better squad, at least on paper, than we had last year. Going forward, we do. Um but it just reached, I think, a crescendo, really. Um, um, so, 10 minutes after the final whistle, it was announced that Paul Hurst um, 
got sacked, a la, uh, John Tonder. Uh, he, he broke uh, the initial news. And after that, I was seeing all these comments, all these comments saying, um, you know, thank you, Paul, and uh, thanks for the effort. That is what I'd like to state, my own personal thanks to Paul Hurst, not just for this time round, but for the first time round. Um, uh, a lot of respect for that man. And I, I said this in a previous video the other week. You'll never hear me slag him off. Um, he was a hardworking guy. He was an honest guy. He was a genuine guy. Uh, he was a true guy. Uh, he cared about the club. You could tell that. He was an honest guy. Um, what I like, what I liked most about Paul Hurst was uh, he would tell you what you need to hear. He wouldn't tell you what you want to hear, and I think some fans didn't like that. You know, uh, uh, there was a minority of our fan base that did not like him, didn't have time for him. Uh, whether it was because of the end of his first stint or whether it was for whatever reason it is. Uh, I am not one of these people. I am not one of those people. I will never be one of those people. Um, I've got a couple of memories that I'd like to share with you that um, uh, sum up sort of Paul Hurst um, as Marjo Grimsby Town. And obviously the first one has to go back to 2016. And people would say to me, well, you're going to say the playoff final, aren't you? No, I'm actually saying the playoff semi-final uh, second leg win over Braintree. Um, that kind of showed you what kind of team that we had even back then. Because um, a lot of people fancied Braintree um, in that second leg. Everyone had thought, well, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd gone one up, they'd won at Bundle Park in the first leg of the playoffs. And um, and obviously Danny and Nicky Cowley were in charge of Braintree at the time. And uh, everyone sort of written us off. And uh, But Paul just kept on believing. Paul and Chris uh, kept on believing and uh, knowing, that, knowing that we had it in us to, to, to do that. And I always say that semi-final second leg gets forgotten. And... Uh, uh, that showed you what a real Paul Hurst team was. Uh, fighting, difficult to beat, um, difficult to score against, you know. Um, so that was one standout memory. Obviously, the other one has to be West Ham because I was there. Uh, and, um, you know, again, it was a never say die attitude. If there's one thing that Paul Hurst's sides have is uh, a never say die attitude and um, you could definitely tell it, it, the last couple of uh, seasons uh, take the, the last few months away, the last couple of months away uh, we had a never say die attitude, uh, we were difficult to beat, we were together as a team that's how we got out of the National League first time it wasn't by being the best team but it was probably by being the most together team um, and you, you know Paul made us uh, Paul gave us some of the best memories I've ever had um, in a as a town fan um, and a lot of fans don't like this but I put him up there with Alan Buckley um, I remember saying that in a, in a video a few months ago I put him up there alongside Alan Buckley um, and fans that don't like him are going to disagree but you can't disagree he's up there with Alan Buckley he is outside Alan Buckley he's our most successful manager that we've had um, you know if you look at, at the last 10 years of Paul's career um, six of those years have been with Grimsby Town Half of his managerial career has been here. Uh, and, you know, he bought through some some 
great players he brought to the club. He brought Alan Connell to the club. He brought Liam Hearn to the club. He bought um, he bought Toto. He, he bought uh, he bought Bogle. He bought Podge. Um, he bought um, he bought Gav. You know, he bought James. He bought he bought Maku. He bought James McEwen in. He bought Craig Disley in. Um, you know, he bought Abo in, who is a good player, and uh, uh, you know he was able to bring Danny Rose in. Uh, I mean, we would never have signed Danny Rose three, four years ago, not in a million years. Um, you know, and if you go even deeper into that, he, he bought you know Scott Brown and and Paddy McLaughlin and all these players into the club. It was sort of like you know slowly building the club to 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 bring in uh, to bring us into a into a successful period and then uh, and then and then he left us and then uh barely became our savior even though we got relegated in 2021 uh even in that small spell that he had he bought in Jay Matete on loan which uh people may have forgotten you know and uh, he was a standout performer the the lockdown season that we we got relegated and then and then he had all of Holloway's mess to uh, sort of bring together and um, offload um, and he did that and he he, he got us a, a squad that again was together he brought us John McAtee in you know if you look at overall his transfer business over nearly the nine years he was actually at the club well, it feels like nine years um, it was probably only about six but yeah it feels like nine years in, in the six years he's been here overall he's done more right than done wrong and uh, uh, one singular performance that stands out to me, from a Paul Hurst perspective, I've, I've got to say the... Uh, everyone talks about the Wrexham game. I've got to say the Notts County game. The, the Notts County game in the February. Uh, to me, summed up a, a Paul Hurst team. Uh, we had been on a terrible run up to that point. Uh, no one gave us a prayer going to Meadow Lane that day. Uh, I think nobody won at Meadow Lane up to that point in February of 22. Uh, February the 5th, I remember it very clearly because I was there. Um, and, uh, you know, that just epitomises what Paul Hurst is, was and will always be. We would not have got out of the National League without Paul Hurst. And if any fan throws that and says that we wouldn't have been, um, then you don't know football really. We wouldn't have got out of the football league first time. Uh, football league, we, we didn't go out of the football league. Uh, we wouldn't have got out of the national league first time asking without Paul Hurst. That there is no getting away with that. Uh, and these, some people I've read saying, you know, uh, you know, thank God he's gone, and now we can sort of build up. People are forgetting. And uh, a lot of fans aren't. I want to say this is a minority. This isn't a, a a majority. It's a minority. But they always heard the loudest, aren't they? Um, you know, he did get us into the highest position since 2006. So 17 years. Um, you know, uh, and maybe he should have. Maybe he should have gone that summer. Maybe he should have done. Y you know, um, but. You know, loyalty to Paul. Paul bought players in. And he's bought more skillful players than we had last year. Without a shadow of a doubt. But we lost something. In the last 10 games, we we lost something. Um, we lost that know-how. I, I think, in a lot of ways, I think the defence got weaker. And I will say this. The defence let him down. The defence genuinely did let him down um i can't say the attack did um because we've actually scored 20 goals this year 
in in 16 games that the attack hasn't let him down the defense has you know they've conceded 26 um you know and and you know we, we we've been in games and then made sloppy decisions but uh, i'm going off on a tangent there really but again this is about for paul hurst i just want to say a thank you to paul and chris because chris chris doig uh, doesn't get enough credit for what he did well at the club you know and people seem to forget as well and uh, 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 with chris doig as well chris doig finished his playing career at grimsby you know so this isn't just a, a goodbye from two guys that have managed chris has been uh, eight years uh associated with grimsby minimum because he had a year as a player as well and um uh, in fact that's how um he started to become paul's assistant when paul uh started to fly solo um so this isn't an easy goodbye for for anybody really it might be for some small sections of fans but from me and speaking for uh a majority of town fans i'm sure there'll be some that disagree paul and chris thank you so very much for the effort for your time for the memories that you've uh given definitely the younger generation of uh grimsby fans to remember uh you bought them a lot of success uh and for a slightly older generation like myself not too old as i do you know uh, bringing back some good times you know you really dug us out of a mess um in 21 um 22 uh the owners uh cannot fault them um they gave him every single chance to try and turn it around it, it wasn't to be but the paul and chris all i say is thank you very much um your contributions to this club will never be forgotten uh, and uh, the good times that you've given me as a country fan and many others and the younger generation of, of Mariners uh, cannot thank you enough for it it's a shame it had to end the way it did um, I will always be a Paul Hurst guy um, always be uh, and I'll be uh, interested to see what happens to Paul uh, in his next move hopefully it's against no one that can trouble us but in, in either case thank you to paul and um thank you to paul and to chris and uh also it was announced today that uh it'll be uh ben davis and sean pearson for the next little while and that's going to be taking uh first team matters with um a lot of the other coaching teams i'd imagine uh, Neil Woods will probably involved. I'm sure Dave Moore will be involved. You know, to help these two through uh, a rocky patch, whilst we look for a new manager. Um, I've I've seen some names that have been brought forward. Uh, well, fans have been saying the Cowley brothers. Now, after yesterday, people have ma mentioned Gareth Ainsworth. Uh, I, I'll throw a few names that I can do now because we don't have a manager in the job. Uh, my first choice would be Pete Wilde from Barrow. Uh, whether we can go and get him, I don't know. But he's definitely uh, first choice for me. Um, but uh, I think as well, you know, you could probably entice him in Birchnell. Uh you know you, you could uh, there's a number of, uh, of, of managers that you could you're obviously going to get the same names linked as well I'm sure you'll get Robbie Stockdale linked you, you'll get you'll get you'll get the usual people uh, but my choice would be ideally um, in an ideal world um, would be Pete Wilde if you're looking at a, a, a young coach, why not look at Luke Garrard at Bournemouth? You know, um, I, I saw people mention Phil Parkinson at Altrincham. Um, I would support him like I would support any other manager. 
Um, but I think uh, the owners are doing things right and they are doing things right. They're making it. Uh, I think this job is more attractive job. It's a more attractive job uh, to get your teeth in. Uh, more attractive job than it was three years ago. You know, and I'm not saying we're going to get a top, top end manager, but I think more managers are going to be interested in taking this job now, knowing that the, the, the board give you every opportunity to get it right. Knowing how the club has progressed on and off the pitch um, in these last two and a half years that the owners have been there. Um, you know, and now we look towards a new dog with some trepidation because he's, Paul became like part of the furniture. You know, you thought Grimsby Town, yeah, so you thought Paul Hurst. And, and now um, we're going to, uh, I, I would say, a, a proper period now without Paul. Um, still optimistic about going forward. This, uh, I just want to say this, this is probably the most intriguing appointment, a uh, most exciting appointment that I've ever seen us take part in. Um, I, uh, I really don't know which way they're going to go. Uh, my overall opinion as well, I know I said about... Um, uh, Pete Wilde being my main choices, I don't want a former player of that. That is the only thing that I would be against, would be like if it was Johnny Mack or, or, or Gary Childs or something like that. I would hate that. I would hate that. Because I think they'd be under more pressure being who they are. In one way they'd be under more pressure, maybe some fans are given more time. But then what's the difference? An assistant role, I wouldn't mind John having, or, or, or Gary, but not as manager and assistant. So, to me, I think it's got to be somebody completely uh, fresh, completely different, maybe a little bit more dynamic, but I want somebody just as honest. Uh and there are those managers out there. I want somebody just as honest as Paul. I don't want us to. I don't want managers to tell us what we want to hear. I want someone to tell us fans what we need to hear. And and don't sugarcoat it. You know, I think it's the best way to go. Um, what I will say is this will be the end of my video. Um, but I do know the DN35 boys are going to be on um, on uh, on social media, on, on YouTube and on uh, Facebook at 8 o'clock. So do join Alex and the boys and the gang on the DN35 podcast. They do a podcast. I'll be joining it. So I'll, I'll be watching that one live uh, with Mike, Alex, Bruce and all the gang on there. So do join them from 8 o'clock. If you are a Grimsby Town supporter, uh, get your opinions in. The guys love your opinions, and uh, you know I'm sure there'll be some some uh, good bantering going on, and I'm sure there'll be some great, great, serious discussion. Uh, my question for you is: Now the dust has settled. We've gone 24 hours now since uh, Paul sacking. Who is your choice? Who would you like to see? I don't want to know who you don't want. Because if you don't know who you don't want, I want to know who you do want. Don't make it far-fetched where it's so unrealistic you may as well not even have said it. Honestly, if you... Give me three things. Give me a choice that is your absolute choice. A dream choice. But that, that is realistic. And a, a choice you might not think of, but you go, yeah, if we went for that, I'd be happy. Um, so leave your comments for me down below or on my social medias and, and things like that. 
um, and let me know what your opinion is and how do we move forward? It's a quite simple question. It's quite some answer to the question. We move forward together. This season is not over. Um, this season is just getting started, I think. Uh, I think we need a refresh and I think that we may have a couple of uh, rocky months or so coming up but uh, uh, let me know your comments down below now it's you who do you want in charge what do you think went wrong and why do you think it went wrong and uh, please do like please do share subscribe to my channel please do leave a comment I will I will reply to you if you leave me a comment I will be doing that please do like share subscribe hit that bell button that'll let you know when I do upload uh, another video like I said join the DN35 guys at 8 o'clock on social media on YouTube on Facebook all that good stuff join Alex and the boys uh, and the people on there and the gang on there and uh, just one final time from me Paul Hurst, Chris Doig, thank you very, very much for all the time and all the effort that you put in the Grimsby Town over your two spells. Uh, thank you so much for your effort. Your contribution to this club will not be forgotten. And I'm sure once the dust has settled, everyone will welcome you back to BP with open arms as guests another at any time but once again to Chris Doig to Paul Hurst thank you so much see you soon